green lights on, huh? Uh -huh. There's a lot of bees. Huh? A lot of bees. A lot of bees. Oh boy, yep, the doggie's going in. Yeah. Wow. Uh-oh, I heard a wow. I mean, obviously it's a different hive. You said they were gone completely. Even yeah, for a long time. This just came up. Well, they moved back into summer. Good morning, Killer Bee Nation. Good morning, Killer Bee Nation. Hi, Killer Bee Nation. Hi. Yes, indeed. It's one of those mornings. It's like 70 degrees. Beautiful. And it's right before Christmas. I didn't ask you guys if you wanted vests, but I didn't put one on. No, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. We have our vests that we can wear. But we, we, we're actually out in beautiful, beautiful McNeil, Arizona. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. I hear you're fucking channeling my grandmother. We're out here in beautiful McNeil. Uh, and, and we're, uh, this is a redo actually of a huge tree. And if you guys want to watch the original video, uh, what do we call it? Mulberry cr crack critters. Mulberry crack critters, because it's in a mulberry tree. Really old, beautiful old uh, mulberry tree that is hollow and full of holes and doesn't have any leaves right now, of course. But it's full of bees. Yay. So what we do is we guarantee it for two years in that location. And so that tree is guaranteed. And they... A bird poked a hole in the expanding foam or some damn thing, but we're gonna, just going to get up there and see what what it looks like. How far up are they, Hosh? Up in the air? About six feet right now. Oh, so we can just grab the... Yeah. Oh, so they're in that original slit in the... Well, that's one door. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, shit, Killer Bee Nation. I'm Reed Booth, Killer Bee Guy. we got Hosh looking good. Oh, you know what? We should get our new Superman patches. You son of a gun. Where's mine? Gosh. Somebody sent us Superman patches. So if anybody wants to send us patches, um, patches, the clown, uh, uh, Velcro. It's the only way. They stick right to this stuff. We don't have to sew them on because, like, I got time to sew. So what, I say. Anyway, Velcro is the way to go. That's for sure. So, Killer Bee Nation, we've got Trez on camera action. Say good morning, Trez. Good morning. Sticky. I, well, yeah, stick to itiveness. Uh. Yes, that's a good look, by the way. I like that. That's uh, really awesome, yeah. She likes sticky stuff, actually. I know. Okay, no, she doesn't. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what do you want? There you go. Uh, no, 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 no. You can. No. You can put it anywhere. No. Anywhere you Where's like. mine? They didn't send one. They don't, because you're behind the camera. Here. <laughs> Who sent it? I just looked them up. I'm just there kidding. You are. I'm kidding. Because you know what? Yeah. I have a stylus and I got cool gloves it's, that yeah. Reed forgot. <laughs> MedTech sent Trez gloves. Sorry. See, that's why and we can't. And they're pink and they look really cool and I forgot them that's at the why ranch. We can't... Ah! Oh, wait, here we go. This is the land of, uh, you know, dinosaurs and elephants, pink ones, and Tombstone and Pertleville. And we're very near Elfrida. What more could you want? I got one on me. You got a bee on you already? All of the bees that we deal with, all of the bees are not broad, general, sweeping statement bees. They're honey bees. All right, now we rarely deal with any of our native pollinators because we don't want to. We will if they're a nuisance or if they're being a pain in the ass. As an incredible romance about honeybees. 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 Honey, honey, honey. Honeybee. Honey. Honey, honey. Honey, schmeckity. So, where? Over here. Oh my here. God, look at that. Over here. But I, don't, one. but I don't see any guards. Uh, no guards and no... What I think is wow. I think they're robbing the honey that's in there. I think you're absolutely correct. Because there would no be, pollen. There would be... That's a lot of robbers. But of course this time of year is nothing else for them to do. Right. And there would be somebody's... Um, Oh, rosemary plant or whatever. Now, all right, here's a, here's what we're going to find out when we get the ladder over here. Yeah. Is, is um, how, if these guys are ornery or pissy, because if they are, I've got a couple stories to tell that you haven't heard yet, Hosh. That's a lot of activity. So those are, those look like robber bees and how we can tell the difference. These are honeybees, of course, killer bee nation. Uh, Africanized honeybees. Are they wearing little masks like robbers? Uh, yes, they are. They got the little Lone Ranger masky things on. And because uh, they're robbing. They are literally robbing. Now, this time of year, we're right before Christmas. There's no wildflowers out and all that, but it's 70 degrees right now. And these Africanized bees, anything about freezing, and they're out farting around looking for something to do. 
They don't take a break, they don't take vacations, they don't migrate, they don't hibernate, and the guard bees never sleep. Now, they will like your garbage cans. They will like your screen door because uh, our homes smell good. They also really love old hives. Really, 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 really. And they love to steal honey. They are so keen to steal honey. Um, I'm very curious, Hosh, because what we had was an instance of a person that was brushing, I can't remember if I told you this or not, brushing bees off of a hummingbird feeder, mm. or actually just reached up to take it down mm. and got attacked mm. by foraging bees. Now, foraging bees and robber bees, same thing. Uh, they are bees that are shopping. They are bees, whether they're, we call them robber bees because if they're stealing someone else's honey, they're robbing. If they're on flowers and getting the nectar, then they're foraging. But they're, to them, it's the same damn thing. What does it look like? So we're going to figure out if they're aggressive. Also, we're going to scrape some of that expanding foam down. Yeah. We, we didn't even see that hole. Oh, no, well, they weren't, they weren't using it. What do you think? I don't know. They're not aggressive yet, but I'm. But I also haven't. You didn't stick your finger in there. No. Stick your finger in there. Stick your finger in there. Eh. Eh. Uh oh. Now not too much clowning around, everybody. <laughs> oh look! Look, there's no clowning down here, huh? No clowning at all. Okay, easy with the clowning. Easy. Clowning. You too. Easy with the clowning. It's serious business, the bees. Serious. It's serious. So, it's a somber serious. affair. Serious. Serious it's a somber serious. affair. There you are. There you are. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's not ironic. It's killer bees. Beautiful. That's, that's exactly the vibe I'm looking for. That's the vibe. That's the most, precisely... That's the most serious we've ever been in the 20 years. Yeah, that was very serious. It was actually a religious experience. It was the Danish. It was the Danish coming out in her. It was the Danish. Before it was the Irish coming out in her. So they're not... They're not aggressive. No. No. All right. Well, good. I mean, better than... So they're robber bees. Okay, now this is very interesting, Killer Bee Nation, because, um, you know, I well, can... Oh, they had a hive up there, I guess, huh? Uh, oh, the whole no, tree. Back, behind, behind. And this, this limb this Here, that he's yes. on, look at all of the artwork that Hosh did yeah. all the way up. Oh, yeah. So that was all hollow. In fact, when he said that he saw bees coming out the owner's like, I thought for sure we were going to look all the way up the top. Right. Okay. And see them coming and going that's out of there. Oh, that, the that's, what that, that's just like... Well, I guess we just foam it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, let's uh, let's try diet again. Okay. I would I would suspect that the recommendation would be to cut the fucking limb off. Oh, you well, think? that is the recommendation. You think? So these are bees coming from a neighboring hive killer bee nation. The thing is, is that they will come from up to a three mile radius, which is a long damn ways, and there's shitloads of hives around here. Now they are keen to steal honey, so they're going in there because it smells really good. This whole limb smells really good because it was full of really a lot of bees. That hole, when we were here before, they weren't coming out of that knot hole where we're seeing them right now. Doesn't mean it wasn't there, it just means we didn't see them and nobody came out there. Well now, robber bees are very keen to find an opportunistic, they're very opportunistic. They're keen to find a doorway, they're kind, keen to break in, all right? So they did. They didn't even need to, they just found that hole. But once they find, okay, there's scout bees going every which direction all the time, looking for something to do. Look, sniffing around garbage cans, sniffing around your house, sniffing around old hives. When they find a source that they can rob from, they go back to the hive and do a little dancey dance. You've heard of that, <laughs> wiggle their ass and shit, you know, and all that. And they, so that they can, tell the rest of them where it is and they're so damn cool that they can tell everybody in the hive where this nectar source or honey source is they can tell them how far it is they can tell them like which trees they have to fly around obstacles uh the terrain and where it is and so they will also bring back the scout bee that is went off to find this Goes back and she will bring a little bit back. Now, if it's in a field of like flowers, say 
it's a field of clover or mesquite or whatever. She will rub herself with a pollen and, and get some nectar and bring it back so that the rest of the bees can smell it and taste it and know what they're looking for when they get there. Did you know that, Hor? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. They're, pretty, so, they're very communicative. Very, very communicative and very Viking-like. They want to get together and be a horde and steal shit and rape and pillage, etc. So they will, then they send the whole fam family out and they'll come wave after wave. And when they find a nectar source and they all have that smell and that taste and whatnot for it, they will focus on that flower. So that's how we can, in a, a feral hive, an unmanaged feral hive out here is a good example, where we'll have light honey right next to dark honey. Now that's also time of year, but if the two flowers are blooming side by side, they will focus on whatever flower, until that nectar flow is done, whatever flower that they are focused on. That's what they will focus on. They will mix it up a bit, of course, it's just mother nature, but they will tr focus on that one flower. Now honeybees are so great for pollinating monocrops. They are excellent. They are the ones that can do that. That's their job. They're really good at that. For our native uh, um, flora, no. Our native plants, they are horrible at pollinating our native plants here in the Western Hemisphere. Because remember, honeybees are invasive to the Western Hemisphere. Horrible for pollinating native uh, plants and whatnot, wild plants. Whereas our native bees, remember before I was talking about bees and honeybees, there's a big difference. When people talk about saving the bees, well, we're totally with them, almost. <laughs> you know, so we're saving bee, the bees, which bees? It's too broad of a general sweeping statement. You know what it would be like? It'd be like uh, someone saying, let's save the birds and only focusing on chickens. Because honeybees are kept in boxes. Honeybees, even though they're insects, have been bred for 10,000 years. European honeybees in particular. And so they are not native to the Western Hemisphere. So we talk about native bees, native pollinators, when we talk about saving species. Uh, invasive species? No. No one, I don't think anyone in their right mind would want to save an invasive species. And now there is a difference between invasive species and... Um, non-invasive and non-native, right? Right, not native. Yeah, yeah. not native. Look at that. How's it going up there? Good. Excellent. They're Good. robbers. Yeah, they're all robbers. Yeah. It's not a new hive. Would now, it... there's a big difference between invasive species and non-native species. Okay, let's take an example of like a pecan orchard. Okay, not native, but non-invasive. See, invasive implies that it's going to take over where you don't want it to. It's just going to, like buffalo grass, or what we call cancer trees here in the desert southwest. They're, um, back in China, they're trees of paradise, and I understand, or trees of heaven. I understand why they call them that, because where they belong, they're incredible. But here, they're super invasive and impossible to get rid of. Or that uh, there's uh, a lot of different types of invasive species. Well, we're talking insects, of course, honeybees. Honeybees are an invasive species because when you have a bee box in your backyard, it's not like your pecan tree. That pecan tree is not, it may send out seeds and nuts in every direction, but it's extremely rare for wild and volunteer pecans to pick up. All right, do you see what the difference here? Whereas honeybees, you can't keep them in your backyard. You're, it's not going to happen. You, They need to go at a three mile radius to stay alive. They need to go to the neighbors. And that's not only that, but when they swarm, or nature's way of propagating the area with bees, that 10 or 20% of those bees are going to take off, go find a new place to live. They're not going to stay in your backyard where you have your hive. They might, but chances are they're going to go within a half a mile away. Yeah, there's invasive, you get it? So they're going to go populating the whole damn neighborhood. Now this has happened all over the Western Hemisphere with European honeybees all over the Western Hemisphere. That's all we've had since the early 1600s, there, there, since the uh, mid-1800s in Arizona. There were no honeybees here until 1872, ever, in the state of Arizona. And then we have the damned Africanized come in, and that just changed everything, because all of a sudden they're aggressive. Yes, to us, to our animals, and horribly so for native pollinators. So we have a lot of vids on our social media platforms 
We put up a lot of news articles about people getting attacked by bees. And you know, like I say, if it, when you get attacked by honeybees, uh, when you're the one getting attacked, who, who gives a shit if they're Africanized? But it will help us to know what the extent of the infestation is around the country. So it turns out that Africanized honeybees are in all of the lower 48 states. Also in Ontario, Ontario and Alberta. That's it, Ontario and Alberta. So they're here. We're not going to get rid of them. We're getting rid of them where we can so that they don't interfere with our animals, our livestock, our health and well-being. They will kill anything. They're all Africanized in the state of Arizona and we know it's 100% here because I didn't make that shit up. The laboratories in Tucson did. Okay, the people that do the genetic testing. And this is since the late 90s. Late 1990s. So let that one go, guys. Anybody that wants to argue about it, just go back to your mother's basement and shit. We don't care. <laughs> so it's an interesting thing to Google, though, and, and search. Do a search on it. Chat, G, chat BTP. There you go. Yeah, chat BTP or Buzz BTP. It's the new AI search <laughs> search tool. That was stupid. So, um, but if you uh, if you do a search on any of this stuff, you'll see just how right I am, <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Not you got anything to say about old hollow trees? Well, you know. Oh. We guarantee these jobs for two years. So if we've come and we've kicked out your bees and a new hive moves into that location we're going to come and take care of it at, at no charge in Cochise you, County you basically already paid for it so the yep. guarantee comes with your comes with your purchase yep we're here for you yep they get a guarantee and a six pack just kidding yeah, no you do get a free jar of honey they though. do get a free jar of honey yeah they do but uh maybe um cut this limb yeah, yeah no shit